This is part 51 of my series on my Engage Model Railway project. Previous parts covered the project from its inception through the creation of the baseboard, selection and laying of track, building of scenic items, obtaining rolling stock, etc. The project is ongoing. This part is about a Union Mills Web Goods locomotive. First a detailed look at the model, and then some video of the impressive pulling power of this engine running on the layout. This is an unusually prompt video for me, as I only received this loco in the post this morning, but since I had it on the layout with a train, I thought I might as well go right ahead and cover it. Here's how the loco arrived, except there was a lot more packaging than this. The loco had been very securely packed for its journey across the Atlantic from Bognor Regis, where it started, to Brantford, Ontario, where I live. And I can say right away that I'm very pleased with this loco. It does a fine job of carrying on with the tradition of the Union Mills locos I already have, and if anything, this one amplifies the good points and reduces the less good. In fairness, you'd have to say that the Union Mills locos, as they generally come, are not the most impressively detailed models around. In fact, I'd have to admit that they're pretty sparse by modern standards, almost nothing in the way of separately fitted or even separately painted parts, and that conspicuous wire between the loco and the tender isn't very nice. But the reason I keep buying Union Mills locos is that they actually do what locomotives are supposed to do. They pull trains, and darn well too. Now, while I've got this picture up, I might as well cover the other negative point about Union Mills locos, since you can see what I'm talking about best in this picture. Look underneath the loco and the tender, between the wheels. See how low that solid chassis is, especially on the tender? There is very little clearance underneath this model. And that is typical of Union Mills models. Some are a bit better in this respect, some a bit worse. But it's always a worry, as that low-hanging chassis tends to hit anything that is sitting between the rails of the track, such as the guide rails of points or the beds of level crossings. So Union Mills models can be rather prone to derailing when they go across anything of that kind. The Cato four-way crossover on my layout is a particular bugbear for them. Getting my Union Mills Crimson 3F across that without derailing is, well, very tricky and the success rate isn't good. So far this web goods loco has not derailed at all. The tender rocks a bit as the chassis brushes over, brushes over the guide rails on points, but loco and tender have managed to stay on the rails so far. And here is the loco on the rails, ready for my first testing with it. I bought this loco as a used item in an auction on eBay. I don't much like the auction format. It's very frustrating as you take time finding things and then someone almost always outbids you at the last moment, so the whole process is mostly frustrating and annoying. But I do occasionally throw a bid at something up for auction, especially something like this, a Union Mills model representing an LMS original of which I haven't seen any representation before. And obviously in this case I did win the auction. Although the model was listed as used, it seemed to be pretty much in new condition, and I had no way of knowing how much running in it might have had, so I thought I'd better run it in a bit before hooking it up to a train. Which I proceeded to do. The next few pictures were taken during the running in process, so the loco was in motion at about 50% power. The loco seemed to run fine round the layout at 50% power. It may have already been properly run in. At this point, I should perhaps say a bit about the prototype, the Web 18-inch goods engine. The 18-inch refers to the cylinder diameter, and was in any case not always exactly true, but let's not get hung up on that much detail. Uh, these were already quite old engines when they were inherited by the LMS from the London and North Western Railway at the time of amalgamation in 1923. They were manufactured between 1880 and 1902. So the newest of them were 21 years old at amalgamation, and the oldest were over 40 years old. When manufactured, they were considered express goods engines. They weren't, in the real world, terribly powerful engines. The LMS rated them 2F, so less powerful than Jinty tank engines, which were rated 3F. They would, however, of course, have had much more range than a Jinty, being tender locos. 
The previous running in pictures were taken with flash. This is what you get if you photograph a moving loco without flash. It's not really racing, just chuffing steadily along at half power. Here it is apparently whizzing through Colville Station and round the bend by the farm and the cattle dock. The running in went fine, showing no problems, so I didn't pursue it for too long and went ahead and hooked the loco up to a small train. Here it is coming up the curved gradient to the viaduct, which is generally the biggest challenge on the layout to the pulling power of engines. The web had absolutely no problem up there, not even needing to be given any extra power to get up with this train. So I decided to give it more of a challenge and increase the load to 20 wagons. The web did need to be given just a bit of extra power to get this load up the gradient, but it never showed any signs at all of failing. No wheel slip, no stalling. Try that with a Graham Farish loco. The latest Farish locos do look very nice, but they won't actually pull much. You'd be lucky if you could get one of them up this incline with half a dozen wagons, let alone 20. It will be interesting to see if the forthcoming Farish new tooling of the 8F, which is based on a really powerful freight prototype, can actually make some sort of job of pulling a model train. Daypole locals do a bit better, mainly because they use traction tyres, but I don't think any Daypole freight loco would equal the pulling performance of this Union Mills web, and the web doesn't even have traction tyres. It's basically just all down to weight, and a good motor and gearing, and the fact that the drive is through the axles on the tender with small wheels helps. The problem with a train this long on a model layout is that the back is still going round one bend whilst the front is negotiating another. The problems running this train round the layout were entirely with keeping the wagons together. The web showed no hesitation at all about doing its job, but a train this size puts a strain on the couplings, and rapido couplings aren't much good at taking strain. Very slow running as your friend here, it helps to keep the strain on the couplings down by drawing things round gently, and a slow speed makes jogs resulting from going over rough points more gentle, so less likely to cause couplings to part. And of course slow running is entirely realistic for the unfitted freight trains of this period. Anyhow, now let me show you what I mean through some actual video of the web with this train running on the layout. Alright, I just want to see if I can get some video of this web uh, goods, this Union Mills web goods engine, XLNWR 060 tender engine, pulling a large goods train round the layout. <laughs> Now, of course, the problem with this is this web goods is quite capable of pulling this train, perhaps surprisingly. The problem is more the bits of the train are apt to come uncoupled because it's a lot of strain on the couplings, and Rapido couplings don't take a lot of strain. Aha, uh -huh, see what I mean? Oh, that's not good. Yeah, so the, the, the engine is perfectly capable of pulling the wagons, whether we can keep, get the wagons to stay coupled and not come on the derailed is another matter. Oh, no, I guess, I guess backing into the train there, you see I derailed wagons. It can be done, but it's, that's the tricky part. The tricky part is not getting the engine to pull the wagons, it's getting the wagons to stay together as a train. An extreme slowness is probably our friend here, maybe not for the end. Oh, nope, that coupling is just not going to hold, is it? <sighs> That one, that 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 wagon is not a good wagon. That 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 nope. That this wagon is not a good wagon. It's well, I can't complain since I got it for virtually nothing. It came out of a bin, but it 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 
just does not have good couplings, that wagon. But, I mean, the engine has great pulling power. That's not a good coupling. It was remarkable we got that to go up. Uh, the engine has remarkable pulling power. This is the nice thing about Union Mills engines. That's why I like them. They're not the prettiest engines around, but they but they can pull way better than anything else. I mean, you get a, you get a Grand Farish engine to do this. I don't think so. Even a Daypole with traction tires, I don't think so. Certainly not a Grand Farish. Now I'm taking it. I'm trying to take it as slowly as I possibly can in the hope that I can get the train over the points without decoupling anything. And the bends, of course, are always a big danger as well. You go around the sharp bends, that's a sharp bend there on the inner track there you go around the sharp bends that also tends no problem for the engine really but it tends to cause the wagons to decouple oh. that same wagon is decoupled again you say that really is a not a good wagon we probably shouldn't have put it in the middle of the train Trying to start the train off gently. It's always a little hard to start them off gently. Now this point here is one thing that engine has a bit of a problem with because he's low underneath. So every time he goes over that point, his tender rocks because the bottom of his tender where he's driven, his tender, his tender driven, is at the bottom of his tender... Uh, hits the guide rails on that point, but I, so far I've got him over it without him derailing. Well, isn't that impressive for pulling power from that that uh, that web goods engine? Albeit that we're having problems with things decoupling. Ah, and again, yeah. I don't have another, I don't have another wagon handy to replace that one with. But anyway, that illustrated the point, didn't it, I think, that, uh, that the pulling power of this web goods engine is impressive. Oh, yeah, maybe just one more try. I took that poor quality wagon, I took that poor quality wagon out of the the train. And put in a good quality LMS refrigerated wagon instead. Now, of course, the wagon in front of it's kind of on a poor quality as well, so... That's not to say we still won't have problems, but anyway, I mean, that boxcar, that brown boxcar was definitely, someone has thrown it away pretty much, I think. It came out of a, uh, it came with a sort of bag of discarded bits from tiny model railways, and I sort of fixed it up to the point where it would sort of go, but it doesn't have very good couplings. I'm deliberately trying to go very slowly because because with a train this long, bumping them over the points at any kind of speed is apt to cause them to decouple. Ah! But of course, as I say, the, the blasted. See, now it, it decoupled at the same point because that one in front. Ah, no. No. I'm going to end up, de I'm just going to derail wagons like this. No. No, I can't get it round. Ah. 
I can't get it round. It's the one, the one in front now is 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 is, is, is no, it's tripping us up. Okay, I'll try one more time. I've now removed the iffy wagon from in front of that uh, refrigerator wagon and put it up. Now something else totally different has come uncoupled. As I say, this is the problem. The problem is it's just not easy to keep a train like this coupled going round. The pulling power of the web goods is very impressive. I'm only having to give him a tiny little bit of extra power to get him up the gradient here, even with this great long train. This is 20 wagons. But, trying to find 20 wagons that will actually stay coupled together, going round is another, with repeater couplings, is another matter. train is bumping as it goes over right over the uh, viaduct there. I actually took a file to that viaduct to try and uh, smooth it down a bit because there were really pronounced steps at either end of that viaduct piece. But even now that I've uh, filed it down to make a slightly smoother join, there are still bumps there which can derail, which can decouple things. Not so much derail them, but they can decouple things because you know you, you take oh, you go over a little bump with these rapido couplings and they're not that firmly coupled to start with a little bump just makes them come undone and the turn bends that's an 11 inch bend that's an 11 inch radius curve there and those are a strain on the couplings and with a train this long when one end of it's going around one bend the uh, back of it's still going around the previous bend Trying to drive it as unjerkily as possible here so it won't come uncoupled. Okay, well we got it round one full circuit, didn't we now? Because we're past where I started this train. So I got it round one full circuit. And as you can see, the problems are absolutely not with the Web Goods Loco. The Web Goods Loco is doing a great job of pulling this freight train smoothly. The problem is just that. Uh, bits of the train keep coming uncoupled. As it goes on to the viaduct there is a distinct bump there and I'm trying to take it slowly so that that bump doesn't cause any part of the train to become uncoupled. And what have we got? We got four Pico tank wagons built from kits bunch of box cars with a refrigerated one in the middle then three day pole glass lined united dairies wagons Ooh, don't make a jump some random coal wagon and then a, a graham farish um, collectors club coal wagon at the back and then a uh, i'm not sure whether that's a pico or a graham farish lms brake van on the back Well, there you go. He's been round. He's been round a couple of times, anyway. And I think that's a good enough illustration of the pulling power of the Union Mills Web Good Loco.